welcome back to Silverstone Shooting Centre for the second season of the Hawk Optics British Mini Rifle Championship. We're on round four, which means it's the business end of the season. Jim Starley seems to be edging closer and closer to his second title, although he's been closely followed by Ben Ducker, less than a percent in it in round three. Also, we've got Kelvin Leeton um, and... Tom Elloway fighting it out behind them. Then we're on to the senior category where Lee Hopgood seems to be running away with it, John. He does a bit, yeah. Lee seems to have uh, taken this championship to heart. Brown Mike's the second real championship he's done. He's shooting very well. So at the moment, he's uh, winning all of it. Um, uh, see how the, the rest of the season goes. Yeah, who else have we got in the uh, in the runnings? So we've got Josh Hicks has been with us. He's not really been performing as much as we wanted him to, really. He's been in the in and out shooting, really. He's picking his rounds to go, so I think. But obviously, with six rounds and with one, only one dropped, you've really got to be in all of it to really perform at the top. And seven stages ahead of us today, John. Um, we've got some interesting surprises for the uh, for the shooters. Yeah, as the season's progressed, we've decided to push a bit more and doing some different things, really. So. Okay, well, so here are the championship standings after round three, and it's Jim Starley taking the overall one. Only three points in it with Ben Ducker, then Tom Elloway in third, Kelvin Leeton, two points behind Tom. It's been very close. I mean, that's it. There's been the four of them. Anyone could win it in the last two rounds to go. It really is that close. But I think it's a Jim Ben for the win, and it's Tom and Kelvin arguing for third at the moment. Lee appears to have seen you wrapped up so far. Okay, so round five, stage one. Nice and simple stage for them. Little short stage. Targets are only about uh, 20, uh, 12 metres away but they've got to move laterally back and forth to try and see each target because they can't see any of them more than one spot. A lot of backwards and forwards on this stage. Okay, so up first is Tom Elloway. Taking on the targets. Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. It's a thinking stage, this. You literally have to, the, the question is, do you go along right to left like you would read a book? or do you try and remember where the targets are and then traverse side to side? But obviously the minimum amount of movement makes it faster, so it's a, a thinking one. It's an easy one to top up on the targets as well, isn't it? You sometimes you can't remember which one you shot, so you end up throwing a few more bullets in. We're going to see that, yeah. I, mean, I don't think we will from Kelvin, but you'll see people where they thought they shot a target, so they'll put the two more and something else and you walk up and score it and find one target's got four shots in next one's got none it's very easy done that's why you talk laterally thinking the peripheral vision is very important on this stage especially with the uh, bright sunshine Shooter, are you ready? Martin Patrick up next they're shooting micro targets from the alpha zone which is the high scoring zone five points um, is only four inches high and three inches across so it's not very big and they're shooting about 15 18 meters away but that little um, uh, light strike would have hurt Martin there in his time. Did you finish the loan so clear? Yeah, I think you'll be frustrated with that one. A light strike on a short stage, this will hurt a bit. Here's Mikey Secker. Shooter, are you ready? Yes, Struggled with uh, so some good, ish good issues uh, this season. So let's see how the first round treats him. Oh, nice try. She cursing again, isn't that one? <laughs> yeah, pretty simple. Share about the light strike. Paul Van den Bosch, the one leading super senior by a country mile, so he's doing very well, Paul. Very experienced shooter. This sort of stage, I think, you'll like. Purposely, which is not great with his knees. I think you seem confident there. Yeah, here are the results after stage one. Jim Starley taking the win, and it's Lee Hopgood in second place. Very good. Senior shooter taking second ahead of Ben and Nick Toundra, another senior shooter. So that was a stage where a bit of brains came into it as well as fast shooting. So, But uh, Jim took it just by a smart amount. Uh, Tom Elway outside of the top 10, that's not going to do his uh, championship hopes any good. And you saw Marty Secker with that gun problem, that knocked him right down to the bottom of it, a bit of a pain. Yeah, ahead of Steve Durant, he won't be happy there, will he? No, no, Steve won't be happy with that little score, I don't think. And then Martin Patrick again with that light strike. Just going to show a little short stage like that, a reasonably minor gun issue will knock you right away down. Yeah, Dave Salmon's all the way in 25th, it's going to extend uh, Lee Hopper's room. Targets, what do you shoot? Now, there are lots of different types of targets in practical mini rifle. 
but the most common one is a paper target, one of these. That is an IPSC uh, standard target. This is a mini target. There are also what we call micro targets, but all of them score the same. It's also a full size target. Now, the important thing about these is that they have different scoring zones. We have an Alpha, a Charlie, and a Delta. There's no Bravo because it refers to the head shape, which you no longer see. Now, in mini rifle, you get five points for an Alpha, you get three points for a Charlie, and you get one point for a Delta. So you can see accuracy is actually more, far more important in mini rifle than it is in some of the other kinds of practical shooting. The difference between a five and a one is obviously quite a big score. Uh, important to know, two rounds per target. Okay, you can shoot more in there if you want to. You can shoot 100 in there if you really feel like it. Just take your time. Only the two top scores count. So if you put two alphas, two charlies, your score is going to be two alphas, five points each. Now again, the designs of this car is this is a micro target. This is designed to simulate about a 250 meter distance for a full size target. But obviously, most range is a bit shorter than that. We're the only range in the country that shoots 100 meters, but it means you simulate that distance. <coughs> A mini target, which is a more common one you're going to see in most places, is a 40% size of a full size target, but still the same scoring target. And it's two rounds per. Now, additional to that, you also get penalty targets, the red ones. They can be another colour, here's another question about it. A lot of competitions they'll shoot a brown target and they'll have a white as a penalty target. And some places, including us, we will shoot a white target and have a red as a penalty target. You need to know when you get there which is which. It can make a difference. Now, penalty targets will be minus 10 points. Okay, stage two. Now this is a fairly similar to stage one, except we've made it much harder. The targets are 25 meters away, and again, you've got a wide, little short space to work on. They can't see any more than three targets in one spot. Bear in mind there are 12 there, lots of moving back and forth, and I guarantee guys are gonna be missing targets on this stage. I think everybody's gonna be happy with this one, John. Yeah, well, we start them off easy, and then this one's harder, and then they're gonna hate the next stage even more, so. <laughs> There's another one where it's another memory stage. You've got to remember where you where your bullets will go and the angles that you shot at as well. So you've got to plan the stage out. Well, also it's mass. If you notice, look at the numbers of the bow. We didn't take those down to be nice. So in theory, if the competitors are smart enough, they will look at the numbers and they will see which targets they can shoot and they will shoot the numbers in order. So for example, if you can see targets at two, four, and six, from what position you shoot those, then you move across and do shoot numbers at one, three, and five. But it's it, it's, a, it's a memory thing, and the problem. The moment the buzzer goes, your mask goes out the window as well, and so is your memory. So this is a definitely a stage for planning, uh, which can be shot well. Yeah, and on top of that as well, you've got to you've got to count your uh, your ammunition as well, and uh, change your mag at the most efficient point. Well, technically, they shouldn't need a mag change here um, if they just shoot them the rounds they need. But yes, if someone's shot too many, they will need to top up and need to reload and go from there. This is Jack, new, new shooter. Hasn't shot here for a while. I'm not going to guess the, what he what the scored there, John. Yeah, we're not going to start that game, are we? are just calling it alphas and you clearly can't see anything. <laughs> I'm certainly hitting something. Yeah, Jack, but, um, he's the current director on force of these Marines. Um, so he's got some, uh, got some uh, firearms experience. I could see a couple of alphas there, John. No, we're not having that. We're not, not playing that game, we really aren't. <laughs> he did need to top up though, so I think he's, he's going back and forth himself. But he, this is his first, I think, oh, first or second competition, Jack, so he, he's a lot to learn in terms of the transition type stuff and speed, but he's, uh, he's shooting, no doubt his shooting skills. Seems to be doing alright so far. And here's Jim Starley, the person at the top of the championship, the 2020 champion. Now Jim will plan this. He will have planned the stage and shot it exactly according to his plan. So I don't see I don't see much excess movement from Jim today. You can see how still he is when he shoots. A lot of people are still moving around. He's, he's got good muscle control and terms of skill and terms of shooting. It's good to watch. And only shooting what he needs to per target. You don't see him popping up and putting three in each, do you? <laughs> the difficulty here is that you zoom in so you can see the target scores, but it limits your peripheral vision. So you end up looking at the target, and then you miss one walking past it. So what Jim would be shooting is either both eyes open, or he'll shoot once and eyes open. I think he's actually missed one there. I've got to say, I think he's uh, he's gone back to that position. Or is he just checking? Looks like he's just checking. 
Oh, that's gonna hurt. I think he's hit those twice. So here are the results. Kelvin Leeson taking the overall win. Only just from Ben Ducker. That must be very frustrating for Ben, you know, 0.4%. That's what, less than a, less than a quarter of a second or more, two points. Oh, but Jamie C knocked him down with that. He did actually go back there, and I think he did overhit those targets. And, uh, Paul Van den Bosch putting in a good show in the Super Senior category. And look at Lee Hopgood right there, 19. So he did fantastic in the first stage and dropped it all on the second stage. So it's, uh, I bet it's frustrating. But then Nick Townder again, senior. They're not shooting from him as well. Wayne Hemmings, Steve Durant, he's not having a good day, is he? He's not, no, he's, I think, I'm not sure his gun problems, or he's, he's just not being very good. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the latter, I think. <laughs> okay, so we've got plenty more stages, plenty more action coming up, so please stay tuned and join us after the break. Stage three, this is a monster stage. 24 targets at a minimum of 48 rounds. So at least, at least two, three magazines to do this. They can move anywhere in this area here. It's quite a big area, but they've got to shoot all those targets from a distance of around about 40 meters. We really are going to struggle here. I guarantee there'll be some zero scores in this one. Oh, this is going to be a tough one. It's going to uh, drain your, uh, your muscle energy. I, th I think it's, this, is, this is tough. Uh, it, even when I was writing it, the guys were saying, you can't do that, that's a bit unfair. But because you see all the targets are the same height, they're all the same sort of distance away. The capacity just to walk past on this um, is very high. And also, because we've given so much area to manoeuvre in, there's probably a hundred ways of shooting this stage. Um, so it's a good stage to shoot, but not easy to actually clear it very well. Lee Hopgood though, see how he gets on. He did very well in the first one, not so good in the second. So see how he gets on with the third one. Maybe maybe stretching his brain is, is an age thing for him. <laughs> there, is, there is a lot to think about on this stage. The problem is you sit back here, you, you think you've shot them, and you run, you change your position, you go, I don't know about that one, did I hit them? I'm not sure. You put two more rounds into it. And I, I guarantee you there'll be, in the course of the day, we'll have targets there with six, seven, eight rounds in it, because the shooter hasn't realised what we're doing. And here's Paul Van den Bosch. Let's see how his... Uh, Peripheral acuity uh, treats him. See, Paul's just taking advantage of the, some range furniture to get some position, which is good. Um, we didn't stop that. The, the range commands can stop you doing that, but obviously he wants to make sure. And at, and at 40 odd meters, um, the scope rifle. The guys with red dots, unmagnified red dots, are really going to load me here because it's like I said, it's a micro target at 40 meters. Good eyesight, it's fine. Paul, as you can see, is uses magnifier, so he's got a red dot sight with a three times magnifier on it. Um, so that's going to be easier, but um, it's going to be tough with those who are un unmagnified red dot sight. I think somebody's competing on this one with an iron sight. There is, yeah, there's a man of iron sight one. Um, I think iron sights are very accurate, but they're, they're obviously slower than picking up from um, magnified or, or, um, or dot optics. The only downside this stage is actually quite dull to film, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not the action packed stuff that we're used to. No, no, well, you know. I'm here with Paul Van der Bosch. Paul, you just got the big monster stage. How'd you get on? Uh, yeah. With a, a brain as old as mine, trying to remember what you shot and what you haven't is bad news. But I did the best I could. It's a fairly tough stage. It is a very tough stage. One did you enjoy it, though? Did you enjoy the stage? Yeah, because it's a test, and I always enjoy a test, but uh, it was a bastard, basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that technical term. Good luck the rest of the match, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So colourful words from Paul Van den Bosch there. <laughs> but here's uh, Steve Durant taking on the, sta the same stage, and he's staying way back. See, look at that. That's it. He's he's actually gained 10 metres or lost 10 metres distance, but he means he can use the furniture upright for better accuracy. Now, Steve's got quite a lot of experience in long distance shooting, so this may well be the way to shoot it. Do you think you'd be able to see more of the targets from there as well? Well, it depends on the angle, I suppose. They were, when I set the stage up, I wandered around that area and I found at least 10 places where you could see a max number of targets, but it meant more moving. And it, it really, uh, it very, even by setting the stage up, I couldn't find a, a pure way of shooting it. So I think, I think there's no real right or wrong way of shooting this one. But the, the, obviously, the testament would be in the scores. Oh, we know Steve. Steve would have watched somebody uh, shoot this stage and gone, I'm not going to do it like that. <laughs> I'm here with Steve Durant. Steve, you just shot the big monster stage. How'd you get on? 
Uh, pretty well, I think. It's sort of same old for me. Uh, long range, where it's sort of a little bit slower, a bit more about precision, done pretty well. Um, most pleased that I sort of didn't miss any of them because last time I, I missed a few on the more complex stages in planning. So that's well, it's interesting. Bad. On this stage, most people were shooting a bit further forward. You chose to go longer distance to get better shooting position. It seemed to work. Yeah, it didn't seem like it was a stage about speed. It, you know, the misses were costing people dearly. So I was looking for a stable position where I could take a bit of time to think and then get the higher points to make that time worth it. Well, look, well done. Good luck the rest of the day. Beautiful. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, let's see where Steve ended up. It was Ben Docker taking the win in stage three. Quite a way ahead of Jim Staley. Steve got off Tom Alloway. Uh, Steve ran down in six, so it wasn't a great stage, but still mid, mid top ten. I think there on stage you'll see he was slower, but better scores. So, but it was the combination of both that matters. Yeah, and it was uh, Lee uh, Hopgood taking the win in the senior category, then Nick Towndraw there, and Dave Salmons. Kelvin, Kelvin down the 15th, he won't be happy with that. That will have hurt his, uh, com his competi competition with Tom. Yeah, and then just a big list of zeros. I did say that would be zeros as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, there'll be numbers of targets out there. You could have anywhere from 2 to 15 to 20. We run a 42 target stage here once for fun. Uh, so you've got to make sure it's two rounds for targets. You can count our permission to go through to shoot all the targets and take into account some problems. You'll also get other kinds of targets. You'll get what's called poppers. These are big metal plate targets, or plate racks, which are smaller plates, normally between three and six inches wide. And these are uh, metal targets, so they must hit and they must fall over to score. You score five points per one of those shots. So you can hit it, if it doesn't fall over, it doesn't count. You've got to make sure you hit those you can. We have different kinds of poppers of different kinds. They came made of steel, they came made of polymer. We came up with the polymer ones that are a bit inconsistent. Uh, and your plate racks, we have 6, 12, 18 of those. We have lots of them here, they're quite common, quite popular. We also have some different targets. We shoot these little yellow balls uh, in, the, in the competitions here, which is reasonably rare. They're made out of ballistic polymer, and you have to knock them off the, the pedestal to shoot. There's all kinds of things to do. I've seen, even seen beer cans out there to shoot, so arguably wouldn't be technically legal to argue, but it's quite fun to shoot it. Okay, so that's what you're going to see out on the course of fire. If it's red or white, depending on the course of fire, don't shoot it. Make sure you put two rounds each target. If you're not sure, and the idea of the here is you can't quite see the scoring from anything more than about 20 metres away, put another round in. Okay, if you're not sure you've hit it, another round in will cost you less time than the miss, which will see another 10 point penalty if you do miss on targets. All right, that's it on target. Stage four, after all that running around, we're being kind on this one. They have to shoot. There are six metal plates. They must shoot with their left shoulder, and then they must change magazines, and then shoot the right metal six metal plates from their right shoulder. And they can use this barrier to lean upon. Nice, simple stage, but I bet we'll see some problems. Okay, so uh, whoever has uh, been practicing their weak arm, weak shoulder, should uh, prevail on this one. Jim Stanley up first. He's, uh yeah, I always try and make sure there's a weak shoulder shoot of some kind in all the competitions we do. Um, and again, it's just Jim is now showing that his weak shoulder, not necessarily weak hand. So you can just keep um, uh, on the, the stage for a slightly different. So sometimes we designate has to be a change of shoulder. Sometimes designate has to be a change of hand. So this one we kept. It. But 50 meter plates, they're, they're six inch plates. This is reasonably straightforward. But we are going to see people rattle through, not change the mag, and then get six procedurals in the pocket and start the following set, which will re upset them when they go, yeah, I'm not all down, and find out six procedurals in. Jack Dibolo. And he's changed his mag, so he's not useful. <laughs> yeah, he's put it on his uh, weak shoulder now, using his weak hand as well. Yeah, you see, because he's got some military training, the, the military forces tend to train, train whole side weak shooting on the basis that if they're injured in, in theatre, then they have to be able to shoot with their arm. The whole okay, thing changes over. Really? So you tend not to swap Bye. arms, etc., but the whole side of the body. Tom Malloy just taking a couple of, couple of rounds to get his iron, but then. Oh, he's not going to be happy with that, is he? Without shooting his strong hand as well. <laughs> it's interesting you should do these stages. Some people are actually better with their weak shoulder because they concentrate more. Because they have more to think about. They're slower, but they tend to be more accurate. Whereas on the, the strong side, they tend to rattle through rounds and end up missing a few. I don't think Tom's proving that point. No, I think Tom's equally crap on both arms. <laughs> this one is things. <laughs> we are a bit cruel sometimes, aren't we? Okay, shooter, are you ready? Matt Cox, Stand not by. seen him for a while. Left handed shooter, he should win purely for that reason if asked me. 
four rounds to uh, get his eye in. You have to get that in, didn't you? Just his left hand is huge like I have. A bit fuddly there. Once he got his iron though, they all uh, they all just toppled. Let's see what he can do with his weak shot. This is why I put the mag change in there. A lot of people practice this transition one to the other. You throw a mag change in, and all of a sudden your brain goes out the window, wondering where you put a mag. It's interesting to see some of the more experienced shooters still struggle with that. Jamie, too many rounds to yeah, get his eye in there. So let's see what Ben can do. Well, I think we might be seeing the winning stage here. Absolutely. If I cursed it. Oh, oh no. Okay. In a speed shoot like this, a mag, a mag issue is going to be a bit of a killer for him. If it didn't have that mag issue, that would have been a, yeah. a, win, a winning would, yeah. I think um, can't, can't criticise the shooting there. Just uh, unlucky. Are you ready? Let's see what Bye. Calvin can do. He's the one fighting out with uh, Tom Elloway. Tom Elloway didn't have a great shot in there, so he could uh, screw it back some points. You see he's missed one there. The, the trick to shooting plates is to assume it's hit and gone down and move to the next one. If you miss it, then go back to it. Otherwise, you're too slow, waiting for it to fall down. You have to shoot, make the something that's gone down, and to the next one. It turns out if you go back, it's actually faster. That seemed pretty good run, though. Certainly better than Tom's, so I think that'll compassion to two of them. We'll be taking this one. Hey, Martin Patrick, don't see much of him at this season, have we? He's been in and out. Again, he's done some rounds on others. So it's um, quite one of the Northampton targets at um, the uh, club. So these tend to come on mass or not at all. <laughs> a bit Again, of pop. <coughs> see that fiddling around changing the mag is great. I mean, it, it, it cheers me up to see them struggle. <laughs> it means I've made a stage, which is just challenging. Which is, which Other people's pain puts a smile on your face, does it? Pretty much for shooting, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not in general real life. <laughs> Wait, where do you where do you get your comedy from, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was Ben Ducker taking a win. That was a great run. Uh, and then Jim Starley. Uh, e e even with that mag issue, Ben was such a fast shooting through. Um, and then Tom, obviously, despite it looked a bit um, fluffy, did very well. So uh, just to show we are completely wrong. Yeah, and Kelvin Leeton coming way behind. Yeah, so it's Deb, nip, nip and tuck those two. Dave Salmons did not so good again with Nick Taundro Sr. going a bit higher. Um, so I think from his perspective, he'd be struggling a bit in, in this particular round. And Martin Patrick, you saw, it's that struggle with the mag change. It just slows everything down. The score's very good, but obviously uh, zeroed out. Okay, well, still three stages to go over on the 100 metre range. Uh, a bit more running and gunning all on the paper target. So I think there's some balls coming up as well. Yeah, we, we'll challenge him here. We've had some short distance, now some long. Okay, this is stage five. Now, a little short stage here, a little bit of clambering under things we've got to get. You've got three IPSC micro targets one side, which they have to shoot under the barrier or around the barrier. Once they've got that done, you've got another six IPSC micro targets this side to swing round. Little short stage, should challenge them first off. So this is one that they, uh, they can sink their teeth into. This is one they'll enjoy. The yeah. likes of uh, Jim, Ben, Tom, Kelvin, Paul van den Bosch as well. Very different stage this. Little short, sharp targets, no more than about four metres away. Uh, but a lot of awkward shooting positions and a few behind areas you can't see. So there should be some fast stages here. But a, a quick drop shot to a, to a, a delta or something here will nap your score quite quickly. Yeah, some of the tighter shooting by Paul there, uh, tight grouping. So this is one stage you can say they're alpha score because you can see them. <laughs> Not this 100 meter stuff where you just basically BS it. Let's see what uh, Nick Townsall can do in the senior category along with Lee Hopwood and Dave Salmons. Yeah, not seen Nick today in terms of film, so it's um, good to see him out shooting. Nice quick transition. He's quick on his feet, especially for a senior. Uh, he's very experienced shooting, Nick. A lot of pistol shooting as well. Nice tidy round that. There's Vian Davis. He's in the senior category as well, we forget about Vian. Well, a brand new shooter. It's only the first major competition. Uh, he's certainly been enjoying himself and that improved every stage he's had has got better. Um, he's had some gun issues as well in terms of jams half a few stages, which really hurt him, but I think he's enjoying it. The only person he really wants to beat is his son, Tom. It is, yes. There's, a, there's definitely some, some father-son rivalry there, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, it's good to see. 
It's good family sport. I mean, we have a lot of lot of father and son shooters. Don't have any mother daughter shooters yet. It'd be nice if we did. Uh, not not as many women shooters shoot. Uh, it's getting bigger and better, but um, I said you can't force them. But so it'd be nice to have more. They do have a, a, a few couples as well, like Bartlett's. Yes, it's a few married couples. I, I kind of wonder what the conversation around the dinner table is. One beats the other, but. Uh, <laughs> In there, two right in the same uh, hole. Yeah, this is Dan. Dan shooting. As you can see, the experience of shooters, some are very, very fast on their feet, some are a bit more deliberate. The main thing is obviously safety for these shooters. They always say, watch the target for a first competition, don't get disqualified. Because <laughs> it's very easily disqualified if you're not good with your trigger finger or your muzzle. But that was that was exemplary, very good. Here's Neil Wheeler. Again, new shooter. Uh, he's come on leaps and bounds. For a lot of the competitions, he was shooting a rented gun, so he didn't have his own gun at all. But now he's got his license, etc. So you can actually shoot the competitions without a license, um, obviously because it's we have rental guns you can shoot here. But for the most part, it's very hard to shoot a gun which is not yours. This is now his own gun, so obviously he's improved dramatically since he's got his own gun. So he's got no excuses. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so he shot my camera with a rented gun, did it? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. You're not going to let him forget that. I'm Almost. not, no. It's a cheap <laughs> GoPro, for God's sake. <laughs> Get over it. I was, okay, it was, I was amazed at the shot, to be honest. It's at 100 metres. <laughs> yeah, well, you did put it underneath a target. You're <laughs> no one to blame but yourself there. It wasn't even a good one. <laughs> uh, looks like Neil's had some fun here. Well, we're happy chatting about your cameras. He's had a couple of misfeeds there, which is the hurt for especially in a short stage like this. The longer stages where accuracy is more important, a gun jam won't be as dramatic. But a little short stage like this, yeah, it's a killer. Well, here are the results for stage five. Jim Stiley taking the overall victory ahead of Bender. Very close again between those two. Yeah, yeah those two, it's definitely a, a competition between first and second, and second and third between Tom and Kelvin, very close. Nick Towndra, look at his score, nice score that as well. Yeah, Kelvin Leeson down in fourth place was actually the quickest time. And look, Vian beat his son. <laughs> I'll be happy about that. Uh, that car journey home is going to be going to be a quiet one, isn't it? <laughs> and then Dan down there, again, very deliberate shooting, nice and safe, so it, it's good to have you shooting that way. Yeah. And Neil Wheeler, again, that gun problem, again, murdered the score completely, it's just it's unfortunate. I've put in a very simple course of fire here, a couple of targets down the bottom. And what we're going to do is the process of maneuvering around the range from side to side, making sure that our muzzle is pointed in a safe direction, which is obviously down range, and shooting around a barrier. Now, it's only a very short movement here, but it's designed to sort of show the process behind it. And one thing we tend to find with new shooters is that they're very used to the concept of being a bit Hollywood and shooting the gun and maneuvering the gun with it tucked into the shoulder. So you see on TV, the guys are SWAT, where it's going to be. They'll move around like this. They're constantly doing this, going around, shooting around. Okay? Now, the reason why that's used in military and police is because they're shooting at things that are going to shoot back at them. Okay? Don't care how dangerous these paper targets are. None of them are armed, none are going to shoot me. So what we're looking for is speed. Now, if you think about it, once you have your up on your shoulder and you're moving around, by definition, your movement is restricted, and so is your vision. If you're looking down the scope, it's a different process. But practical, when you arrive at all practical shooting, is how fast you can manoeuvre it. And you can time it, you can do this yourself, you can. Get yourself a, I don't know, a guitar or a banjo or even a stick, and see how fast it takes you to manoeuvre front and back with it in your shoulder. And then change it and take the gun away from you. I always say in the training we do, it's a gun, but it's only a gun when you're aiming it. Other than that, it's a big stick. Now, if you have it away from your body, your capacity to move is much faster because my arms act as suspension for the gun rather than it being tucked to my shoulder. So the first thing we teach people, we take away this fat in the shoulder, stick the gun out here, okay, away from the body. It also means if I'm maneuvering around a range, I've got to make sure the muzzle this gun is pointed down range. I swing it beyond 90 degrees and get disqualified. Same thing applies, gun to my shoulder, if I want to run that direction, my shoulders are pointing that direction. So by definition, my gun will swing in that direction. If I want to run that way in my shoulder, I'm going to struggle. If I have it away from my body, I can very quickly run that way and still keep that muzzle 
pointed down rain. Okay, so up close, you're restricting yourself. Further away, gives you a chance to maneuver around. You can concentrate on the barrel being a safe direction. The other thing about it is that the speed of going around the barrier is also based on moving the gun. You move the gun around the barrier rather than your whole body around the barrier. It's faster. Same thing applies. If I want to start over here and I've got the gun in my shoulder and I'm shooting around the barrier, I've got to come around here, then shoot again. If I have the gun away from me, I can shoot, bring it back against self, up again. I'm faster in terms of movement and I'm faster in terms of the gun. After a small little short stage of stage five, we're on to stage six. Now stage six gives them a 90 meter target. They have five IPSC mid targets at about 90 meters and also six full size IPSC plates. They can move anywhere around here and they can lean the tires they want. We're being quite generous that time, but hopefully you get some good scores and some good times. Something completely different. I do like plates at long distance because these are ones where you hit the plate and it doesn't go down immediately. And so you, if you sit there and watch it fall, your time gets ruined. So you have to literally rattle through the plates and they just very slowly fall. So it's one of those ones where confidence is good. But we have given them something to lean off. So Ben's showing here, he's taking advantage of the tyres to lean off and that enables to get some better shots. That's the, uh, the famous poppers. Some people struggle with these. You've got to hit the popper right at the top, otherwise it won't go down. Yeah, it, the top towards the middle. It, 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 down the bottom of the plate, yes, it'll just make a nice noise. But it, it's sort of halfway up on the top. Obviously, the higher it is, the, the quicker it'll go down. So he's done, the, he's done the right thing. Shoot plates first, because you can normally be quick on those and then take more time on the targets go. I'm not going to comment on uh, what he scored on those two. Let's if the target's at the back, I can't see. Let's not. Yeah. You <laughs> at least you can say the plates went down. I, I won't call you out for that. <laughs> oh, you give me that one, will you, <laughs> First plate down. See that, oh, see that, see that was going. Uh, the, Tom should have moved straight on for that one, but it is hard. And again, it's, it's on time aspect. If it's going down, hit at the round will go down faster, but it'll still go down. So did you need that round or not? It's a confidence thing. And especially at 90 metres. Remember, these guys are zoomed in at probably four or five times optic. So they're seeing very close up areas, but it's very hard for them to suddenly maneuver across the other ones. So it's good stages, I quite like them. Yeah, so Tom just went from left to right, so he did the three three plates. Every time he did the three plates. Again, there's no right or wrong way. I, I, I also get that, that Matt will shoot it completely different again. He's left handed shooter, you see, so you tend to shoot like you read the book, left to right. But right handed shooters do the same thing with brain wise, so technically, uh, with a shotgun, it can go the way. You tend to go right to left with a shotgun because the recoil brings your shoulder round with the round shooter and right. It, it, it left hand and right hand different. He struggled his last plate though. Got it. He's got a Mullery score that. And again, this is one where, where the scores are more important than time. If you tend to take another five, six seconds and get all alphas, those extra five points for the alpha compared to one for a delta will make a big difference to overall score. He's topped up on a few of those. Well, yes, yeah, it's, it's an Northampton thing. The club, they do like to triple triple tap things on longer distance stuff. You know, it's, it's that confidence shot. It's sometimes really good because obviously you could have scored, but it's got extra shot. It's you know, quite a time consuming thing. The jam's not going to help them. He's struggling to get his eye in here on the uh, poppers. First one down. As you can see there. Yeah. There we go. Finally gets there. Well done, Matt. I don't think you like that. <laughs> Another NTSC, Martin. He's had a, a mare today. Right? He's, a, he's a good shooter, but uh, the scores today haven't really reflected it. It's one of those bad days, I think. So everybody so far going to the right on these tyres. Seems to be working now. Well, not I say that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. Just, just shut up. There's no more commentary. <laughs> That's a shape for match with. Yeah, it's a proper proper one. That is, he's, uh, that's a jam round, then the second mag is jammed, that is not racking now. So. I think you'd rather go home now, I think, at this point. Can you put four into that first one? Yeah. It's not his day, is it, with this gun? It's not doing any favours at all. 
Do you think that was good? He, it was going, <laughs> so he just took the next shot. So that was a good shooting from Matt at the end, at the end but I think that was a struggle for him. So we've still got a couple of stages ahead of us. That's the end of stage five. Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. Still on stage six. Series speed up. Both around the tires as as everybody else so far we've seen. Take it down on three poppers instantly. That's good shooting. That went down very quick. Very confident shooting here, it seems. Six uh, foot into that oh, uh, that's target though. Yeah, the first two went down perfectly. So he'd be pleased though. That's good shooting. Here's Jack Nichols. Going over to the right, quickly down. I am straight away. Very good. I was assume there, isn't he? There you go. That goes down. Super target so far. Nice and tidy. Give some deal with these last three. First one down, second one, third. Very good. Good Very stuff. Good. Nice shooting there. A round of applause. So here are the results for stage six. It, inevitably it was Jim Starley, but Jack Nichols with that uh, fantastic run that we just saw. It was second. a good run, but see Jim Jim nipped him there quite close though. And then Ben coming up, and then uh, Lee Hopgood again, first senior. Uh, by this one. Kelvin Leaton a little bit further down as well. I saw Tom Davis uh, in around about fourth place. That's a good run by him. Yep, <coughs> beats Dad. <coughs> Dad down to 19th, so they're back talking again in the car. <laughs> then Martin Patrick, you see how that hurt his score there completely. And Neil Wheeler not having a good day, is he? And look at Tom Holloway. I, that, I think he'd rather forget that stage entirely. That obviously had some, I assume, gun problems or just. Uh, just to watch this stage. Okay, last stage of the day, stage seven. I'm back on the wobbly block, I'm afraid. We know how I love balancing on this block. All the shots will be taken standing on this block, and there are 25 IPSC steel plates, ranges from 10 meters to 75 meters. So if they know their zeros and know their holdovers, they should rattle through this stage pretty well. Right, let's right, so do ready. this with one man. Yeah, 25 rounds. No problem at all. <laughs> Let's see how many people do that. <laughs> so first we've got Gary. I do try and make the stages so that there's no, for example, a Chris Vector that I shoot as a 30 round mag. So to have a 30 round stage would be unfair for Vector shooters. And there are little mag extenders. So the 25 rounds, all mags pretty much going to cover those. But yeah. yeah, 25 rounds, 25 targets for plates. They're going to need more than 25. Yeah, Gary's definitely going to need to uh, change a magazine here. Well, he's on a mag, just on the poppers. <laughs> Inch snow, starting with the furthest targets. Generally, I would think the best way of shooting this is the near targets first and then move further away, because that way your holdover, so your position with the scope, will be consistently moving in the same direction. So he's going away, he's going the other way, but taking the harder points first, arguably, I think it's a, it's a tough call. Yeah, Sitting back here, put the target in front of the eye, so they can't see where they're going to go. With the sand, I wasn't going to say it, but no, other people will. I, I don't hang out around emergency <laughs> theatres. <and laughs> <that. laughs> like laughing at ill children. It's like I'm some pain parasite. Like, yeah, yeah. Like one of those demons out of Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely this is going to be, isn't it? <laughs> just want to point out to the viewers, I am not... <laughs> <laughs> Like he really is generally a nice guy. I like to put the tough stage to shoot. Yeah, what are you doing? There's Dan Starnes. Shame that we want to go down. That'd be nice at the first run. Again, it's not easy. Standing on a little wooden block that's only six inches wide, balancing, shooting at a target that's six inches across at 75 meters. It's not easy. Well, Dom Stars has uh, gone through the third most difficult targets for us working his way back. You don't think that's the best way? I don't. I, for me personally, I'd always go near, near to far. Um, it a lot depends on the optics you've got and how you shoot. I mean, 
the bigger the back, I guess, and because they're bigger, they're more in our line to shoot, but I would always go near the far. Uh, but that's a good thing about practical shooting, there's no right or wrong way. Do you ever suit you? Um, you know, I might shoot this way and come on last. <laughs> so. Generally what happens, isn't it? Yeah, thanks. Again, we're moving on that. So, so <laughs> thus far today, I, I'm, I'm a paid <laughs> parasite and I'm crap. Oh, thanks for this. <laughs> Words, the only words that are coming out of your mouth <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with me <laughs> right well, I'm glad to see the Tom Elloway won that one <laughs> <laughs> right, moving swiftly on yeah, Dave Hill second Jim Staley third Marty second fourth that's a good run by yeah, him yeah Marty would be happy with that I'm sure and look at Dan Starnes look at that again new shooter coming in sixth he did that very well Ben Ducker down 11th I guess there's other problem or he wasn't happy that day uh, then Martin Patrick again continuing his very rough day and then Gary we saw shooting with the Vons back again new shooter shot very well And Paul Van den Bosch, Neil Wheeler, still not having a good day. He's been around there all day, hasn't he? And, and Dave Salmon's had an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that's been, that's been tough. The other thing to consider is that I've got a barrier here. Let's assume we've got a longer distance target. It's always better, if you can, is to steady yourself on the barrier itself. Now, this isn't very solid, OK? Not going to be able to lean it too much. But I can still get a hand on it and give me a better position. Now I'm left-handed, so I'm shooting right-hand this time. What you want to do is with your hand is grip the barrier in any way you can, and then give yourself a bridge for the gun to sit on. Anyone who's played snooker or pool, that's what they're looking to do. If you hold the gun and try to hold it against the barrier, it's going to cause swing around the place. So I can get a much more solid position if I go on, hold the barrier, much easier. And the same thing applies. If I'm maneuvering the gun with the weight of my body, I can very quickly get on and put around on target than I can do by holding it close to my body. Having it away from my body is a process, gives you that room for maneuver. All right, so we'll try it again. So again, it's not it's a typical barrier, not very solid, but it gives you just enough to maybe stabilize the barrel a bit more to give me a better shot on target. Okay, simple barrier type process behind it, and the same thing applies underneath. Okay, so we've got a low aperture here as well, and it, it too is that you either sit down or kneeling, same process behind. And what I found with people who kneel and shoot is they kneel the wrong way. Okay, the idea about kneeling is that you actually have your supporting hand with a knee up. So. This is my supporting knee, here's my shooting hand. My elbow is on that knee. That's what gives me a stable position. Very common to see people come through and they'll do that. Not very helpful. So what we try and think is that you're, if you're a left-handed shooter, your left knee needs to be up. If you're a right-handed shooter, right knee. So if I go that way, it's much more comfortable and I go more accurate. If I go the other way, which actually feels odd to me, to be fair. I'm wandering around already. So, they come to knees. Now, <laughs> I've seen people do this. They come onto the barrier and they're ready with that knee forward. Well, um, hang on, I need to change around. You are better off taking that step to going down that knee to lean it than you are trying to go the around, because that gun is waving around. All right? So that's something that you could practice. Again, at home, unloaded gun, on a range if you can, is taking that chance to go and practice going onto one knee, up again, and also around barriers. All right, and again, the barrier side of it. I'm a left-handed shooter. I spend half my life complaining about where the course of fire is going. And you can lean back. Now, one of my fellow competitors is much more a gymnast than I am. <laughs> I can't really get that far back. But it may be easier to if you lean back than it is to, to try and swap hands, which will cover second off. Okay, so that's something to consider. Also, notice in all these shooting we do, I'm shooting two rounds each time. Okay, there is no point practicing unless you're practicing for competition. So every time we compete, we're putting two rounds into a target. Granted, yes, steel targets have one shot to fall, but most of the stuff is paper targets, therefore two rounds count. Therefore, you might as well train the way you're going to shoot. All right, try practicing that if you can. At home with unloaded gun, the range if you can. 
But this sort of thing you do over and over again. Practice, 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 and it's perfect. Okay, so here are the uh, match results for round four. Jim Stanley taking the overall win ahead of Ben Duck. It was kind of inevitable, that wasn't it? But Steve Goth in third, we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, see St that coming. Steve, Steve shot there very well. The, the stages that we saw were very good, so it's a well-deserved third place. He'd be very happy that beating uh, beating Tom Elloway into fourth. And then Kelvin, obviously, down to sixth. So, it's, um, so again, not, not a great one for both of those. And here are the uh, overall standings. Jim Starley topping the championship, still ahead of Ben Ducker. Tom Elloway ahead of Kelvin Leeton after that result. And again, the senior, Lee does have, a, I think, another saleable lead now. But uh, Nick and Dave are nip and tuck a little bit. Obviously, Dave's on more of the championships. Nick hasn't. And Paul Van der Bosch, walk away with Super Okay, so <coughs> another fantastic day out shooting here at Silverstone Shooting Centre. Jim kind of getting a stronghold on the uh, title for the second time. I think so, yeah. I think, I think you'd have to be a, a, a pretty strong betting man to assume he's not going to take this championship with one round left to go, or two rounds left to go. So there still seems quite close between second place. There seems to be a, yeah, a, a, a almost swapping of positions between, between Kelvin and the Tom. And then obviously senior with Lee, again, I, I think but barring something tragic happening, I think he's definitely won this one. But still to go, and, and the last two rounds we, we've put some special stuff in there that I think will, um, will be amusing, if nothing else. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That involves some golf buggies um, out on the 50 metre and 100 metre range.